All right, in this video, I'm going to do an example of hydrostatic force, and we'll actually do a, a full example um, all the way out here. So um, we're going to find the hydrostatic force against one side of this plate. So suppose we have a plate. Um, let's suppose it's sitting here in water. Okay, and it's sitting uh, underneath the water at a depth of it's three meters down, and then uh, we've got this little triangular plate um, at the top. It's five meters across, and at the bottom it is four meters across. We want to find the hydrostatic force against one side of that. So, all right, let me draw a slightly different picture here, make it a little bigger. Okay, so we said that's five meters long, uh, it's four meters tall, and again, it's at a depth of three meters, we said, beneath the water. Okay, so again, what we're going to do is we're just going to imagine uh, basically uh, dividing our little plate up into n pieces. Okay, and each little piece is going to have a little height um, delta x. Okay, so it's going to have a, a height of delta x. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, maybe let's think about this little piece. So maybe we'll look at, at some generic piece here in the middle. Okay, what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to approximate this. So certainly this little uh, rectangular, it's not quite rectangular, it looks like a trapezoid, but I'm actually going to approximate the force um, on this little slice. I'm going to approximate it as though this region were a rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that it was just a little, just a little rectangle. Okay, so let me draw it one more time here. So I'm, I've got that little width here. Okay, so I'm going to call that little W sub I, so maybe the width of the i piece. And what I want to do is, again, I want to think about the force. I'm trying to think about what's the force on that i piece. Let's try that. Okay, so the force on that i piece. Well, again, this is where it comes back to that one little expression that I said was very important. Okay, so the force is going to be uh, the density times the area uh, times the depth times gravity. So I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to assume, um, so let's measure from the top of the plate. I'm going to assume that we go down, I'll call it x sub i units. So I'm just x sub i units down from the top of the plate. Okay, so again, I'm trying to figure out this expression generically. So force is density um, times gravity times the depth times the area. So again, I'm going to fill in this guy. <clears throat> well, the density, that's just a constant. We'll leave it alone for the minute. Gravity is just a constant. We'll leave that alone for the moment. Um, if you want to think about an expression for the depth, in this case, it's not too bad. So again, I'm measuring uh, x uh, from the top of the plate. So if I've gone down x sub i units, okay, I'm down x sub i units, well, the complete depth, uh, the total depth of this, 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 uh, this slice that we're looking at, well, it's going to take x sub i units to get to the top of the plate, and then another three units, uh, since it's another three units below the water. So the depth uh, of this plate is approximately 3 plus x sub i, Okay, so not too bad. But now we have to figure out an expression for the for the area of this this little slice, this generic slice. Okay, so again, I'm pretending that's basically a rectangle. Okay, so if I'm pretending that it, that it's a rectangle, to get the area, I just need to take the width, which we're calling w sub i, and multiply that by its height, which is just going to be delta x, because again, we're assuming all these have a uh, a height here of delta x. So now I need to come up with an, an expression for the width. Okay, so this is where we'll have to do a little bit of geometry. Got to do a little bit of geometry. Nothing too crazy here. Okay, so we're trying to figure out the width approximately of that i piece. We've gone down x sub i units. We know that it's a, a, a right triangle here, five meters across the top. The whole thing is four meters tall. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use some little, uh, some similar triangles. Okay, if this height is x sub i units. We know the whole thing is four units tall, which means this little part uh, at the bottom, that would be four minus x sub i units. And now I'm just going to use little uh, my similar triangles. So if I look at, uh, I've got this little triangle kind of nestled inside the bigger triangle. So if I look at the little height, 
I would have 4 minus x sub i. And if I look at that, the ratio of the little height to the little width, I would get 4 minus x sub i over the width. And that's just going to equal the height of the total triangle, which is 4, to the width of the total triangle, which is 5. So here we're just using similar triangles. Okay, what we're trying to do is we want to figure out an expression for the width all in terms of x. And that way, the idea is, uh, if I can express the width in terms of the depth, uh, basically uh, the whole problem will simply be related to the depth. We'll have it back to a single variable, and we can do some integration here. Okay, well, to solve for w sub i, uh, I don't know what's the easiest way. You could always just cross multiply. So we would get 4 times the width of that ith piece, and then we would get 5 times 4 minus x sub i, and then we could just divide both sides by 4. So it says that ith piece uh, roughly has a width of 5 times the quantity 4 minus x sub i all over 4. Okay, so again, I'm just finding a little expression for that width, but now, uh, again, that's what I'm going to plug in here, okay? So it says the force, it's going to be the density um, times the acceleration due to gravity. The depth is 3 plus x sub i. Now we've got a nice little expression for the width. We said that that's going to be uh, 5 times the quantity 4 minus x sub i all over 4. And again, that's what we're multiplying here by delta x. So now uh, we're, we're in good shape. Okay, We're in good shape. So it says the total force and I should say an approximation so if we want an approximation to the total force we would just have to sum up the force, I'm going to write it as little, so this is generic. Um, we'll say we'll have to add up the force. I'm going to just write it out. The force um, on each piece. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the force on each little, uh, each little piece of this plate, our approximations. Okay, so it says the, f the total force will be approximately equal to, well, we would have to sum over each of our n pieces, so i equals 1 to n, and then we're going to just take this little expression that we came up with. So density times gravity times 3 plus x sub i times, uh, I'm going to write this as 5 fourths, 4 minus x sub i times delta x. Okay, so that's just going to be an approximation to the total force. Well, the idea is to get the force exactly. Cannot write today. So to get the true total force, what we're going to do is we're going to chop this up into more and more pieces. And then we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of, uh, of this summation. So we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation from 1 to n. Density times gravity times 3 plus x sub i times 5 fourths times 4 minus x sub i, all of that times delta x. But hey, now we recognize this as really being the definition of a definite integral. So it says really we can just turn this into an integral and calculate this. So we've got density times gravity. Um, instead of x sub i, we can just write 3 plus x. We've got our 5 fourths. Instead of, again, our little x sub i, we'll just write 4 minus x. Our delta x turns into a dx. Now we have to think about our limits of integration here. Um, our limits of integration. In this case, okay, so we want to figure out the force over this entire plate. Well, x uh, has to do with the depth. Well, we'll just have to figure out, um, you know, at the top of the plate, we would be at a depth, or x sub i, excuse me, um, our x sub i would have a value of zero. It's zero units below the top of the plate, and again, that's how we're measuring x. That's going to be our lower limit of integration. And for x to go all the way down to the bottom of the plate, um, x would have to have a value of four. And now we finally have a nice little expression here for the... Uh, 
for the uh, for the force on that rec or excuse me that triangular plate. So now we're almost there. We can actually just uh, calculate this and finish it off here. So let's calculate this integral, and then we'll kind of go back through it one more time and just summarize. So zero to five fourths density and gravity. Um, I don't know what I said. So zero to four density times gravity times five fourths. Those are all constants. So I'm going to just pull those out front. So we've got 5 fourths times density times gravity. And then we have 3 plus x times 4 minus x left over. All right, so let's see if we can't, uh, can't knock this out without too much trouble. All right, so to integrate this, you're going to have to multiply it out. So 3 times 4 is 12. Um, it looks like we'll get a negative 3x plus 4x, so that'll give us a positive x. And then it looks like we'll get a negative x squared when we multiply that out. Okay, so we can integrate this without too much trouble. We've got 5 fourths times density times gravity. So the antiderivative of 12 would be 12x. The antiderivative of x would be x squared over 2. The antiderivative of x squared would be x cubed over 3. And again, now we just have to go back and plug in our limits of integration. So 5 fourths times density times gravity. Um, let's see, 12 times 4 would be 48. Um, let's see, if we plug in 4, we'll get 4 squared, or 16 over 2. Um, 4 cubed, what is that, 60, uh, 64 over 3. And then when we plug in the lower limits of integration, notice we'll get a 0, plus a 0, minus a 0. So all that stuff's gone. Um, and now we're, we're there. So we've got 5 fourths times density times gravity. Let's see, uh, 16 over 2, that's just 8. So uh, 48 plus 8, that's going to be 56. Yuck, now we've got to get common denominators. OK, not the end of the world. So we can multiply top and bottom by 3. So we've got 5 fourths times density times gravity. Um, let's see, what's 3 times 56? So that would be 150 and 18. So it looks like 168 minus 64 all over 3. Uh, almost there. So 5 fourths times density times gravity. Um, 168 minus 64, I guess that's going to be uh, just 104 over 3, and I'm getting lazy. Uh, you could go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, multiply these things out a little bit more. So you've got 5 fourths times um, 104 over 3. I just want to make a little remark here about the density times the gravity here. Um, when we multiply this stuff out, this force when we're using things here in... Um, in, uh, in meters, that's what we originally were doing here. When you measure things in meters, um, at the end of the day, the force is going to be in newtons. So it's going to be this many newtons. Um, and what we do in this case for, again, since we measured everything in terms of, of meters, we're just going to plug in our values. So you'd have 5 fourths times 104 over 3. The density is 1,000. Uh, so the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, you can multiply this by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. Whatever all of this gives you, uh, that'll be your final answer, again, in newtons. So kind of a long little problem, but again, not the... Uh, Hopefully not the end of the world. So let's kind of recap again what we did. Okay. So again, the basic idea is you've got your little plate. Okay. It's so many. It's at a certain depth. Again, in this case, you could have measured x from the top of the water. You could have measured x from the bottom of the plate. Uh, geometrically, I don't see why it would really matter or make things uh, any easier or more complicated. I'll do a second example where it's kind of uh, conducive. You, 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 it, it makes things a little easier depending on where you pick your, your, you know, your x from, either from the top or the bottom. Okay, so we pick our x in this case from the top of the plate, chop it up into n pieces. Again, each one has a little height of delta x. So to get the uh, area of this little i-th piece, again, you can basically think it's, bas it's, it's close to being a rectangle, so we'll take the width times the height. We can approximate it that way. So that's what we're doing here. We're just taking the width um, times the height. 
Okay, we've got to figure out a nice little generic expression for that. That's where the geometry came into it. We had to use similar triangles. So in this way, I was able to relate the width um, to this value x, the, the distance from the top of the plate, just using similar triangles. Um, at that point, we were able to get this nice little expression for the force. I should even put the force on the ith piece. Okay, well, if you add up the force over each one of the end pieces, Okay, that's going to give you an approximation to the total force. Well, to get the true total force, we'll take, uh, we'll basically chop our region up into more and more pieces, take the limit as n goes to infinity, and again, that's what turns it into a nice little integral, and then we're off and running and integrating, and um, then it's just kind of, to me, usually the integrals on these, they're a little long, but, uh, you know, nothing too terrible, just a little multiplication, um, and just being hopefully careful with arithmetic. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes here. So, all right, um, I hope this helps and makes some sense. I'm definitely going to do another example, so feel free to take a look at that if you need to.